Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. Thanks for stopping by my channel. And hey, if this is your first time stopping by, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. We try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So this week, since it is the first week of September, I thought it would be so fun to do a fall project. And we are going to get out some modeling paste. We're going to get out some paints. We're going to get out a canvas. We're going to throw in a little bit of glass and a little bit of resin. And we are going to be making a really cute pumpkin. So hang on just a minute. I'm going to get my camera angle changed and we are going to get making. Okay, crafters, we are going to do a fun project today. So I am going to share with you how to make a cute little pumpkin using this gallery wrapped canvas. Now this is a nice thick canvas. It is four inches by four inches and you can see the thickness there. Okay, I've got a cute little pumpkin picture that we're gonna put on it. We're gonna use a little bit of modeling paste. We are gonna use a slow dry um, medium, it's a fluid, and I'll show you how we're gonna use that. We're gonna use some acrylic paint, we are going to use some art resin. Um, I'm going to have some gloves ready. Anytime I use resin, I like to do that. We need a little bit of tracing paper. I need my palette knife. I need some tape. And I'm going to need a paintbrush. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to move all these other supplies out of the way. I'm going to unwrap my canvas. now. I will tell you, I really like using these gallery wrapped canvases. Um, and when I say gallery wrap, normally they're your thicker canvases. And what I like about them is they stand up so nice. So they don't have to be framed, you guys, okay? So what we're gonna do um, with this canvas is the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some modeling paste to give the background some texture. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that modeling paste dry and then we'll put our pumpkin on. So this is a couple stages that we're gonna be doing. So with the modeling paste, it is um, really fluid, okay? And all I'm gonna do, so all you do is take just a little bit on your palette knife and you're just gonna rub it across, okay? Now, I'm not doing the sides, okay? And when you look at how my pumpkin is gonna be, he's gonna cover most of it. So really, I just need to hit these ends, the bottom and the top, okay? And then we're gonna let that dry, okay? So I've spread it all the way across, and I just wanna have a little bit of texture um, just in those corners like that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is let that dry. And we're gonna trace our pumpkin on. And I'll show you how we're gonna add our pumpkin with the same modeling paste. So give it a few minutes here, we'll let that dry, and then we'll trace on our pumpkin. Okay, we are pretty well dry. Okay, and so you can just see I got a little bit of texture there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna paint our background. So we're just gonna get that done and out of the way. And I like to take my paint and just add a little bit of water to it, okay? And again, I am using um, Americano um, Hauser Medium Green is what I'm using. I just think it's a really pretty background, okay? And all I'm gonna do is paint my background, okay? And my modeling paste is all dry, so you can see that I'm getting some texture there, okay? And then when this is dry, what we'll do is we'll put our pumpkin on, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this all painted. And this does not need to be perfect, you guys. I am gonna paint the sides also. I didn't do the modeling paste on the sides, but I am gonna um, paint the sides, so I'll probably have to add a little bit more paint. And I'm just kind of tapping this on, you guys, because there is that texture, okay? 
the texture from the modeling paste. Okay, you can see as I'm going over it. Okay. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit more paint. I'm going to add a little bit more water just so it's nice and watered down. And I'm just going to paint my edges. Okay, one thing Lisa forgot to do that I've been doing lately is I've been putting down a pad whenever I go to paint. So I have got a paper dowel close by, so I'm going to use that for right now, but I'll tell you. You guys have seen a couple of my other videos. I've been using puppy pads and I'll tell you they work out so so nice. So I'm just giving this a paint all the way around just because you're going to have this sitting up and so um, I just like the idea of just all the way around your finish looking nice. Okay so I like to pull it the brush up so it's a complete motion. Okay and then the cool thing about these is because they are so thick, I usually can hold these with my finger and then I can get the other one done. And then we're going to let this dry. It won't take long to dry at all, you guys. And then we're going to put some more modeling paste on, but this time it's going to be in the shape of the pumpkin. So that'll be a lot of fun to do and it'll be really, really cute. Okay, a little bit of that white is showing through. Um, from the modeling paste. Um, so I just want to go back and double check all of that. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit more water to my paint. Always have a cup full of water handy whenever I'm working with this stuff because it just glides on so much easier when you've got the paint. And I like to do the brush strokes like that so you're not seeing brush strokes. Okay, I'll lay my guy down. I've just got a couple places here and to be perfectly honest with you guys I think where I've got some of this white still showing my pumpkin's going to um, cover it all up. Okay so we're going to let this have a good dry. Okay so there we are. Let me pick that up so you guys can see it a little bit closer. Okay doesn't look like much of anything right now but believe you me, when we get done with it, it's going to be a cute little pumpkin. So I'll join you as soon as that's dry. Okay, so our little guy is all dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to trace my pumpkin on there. So I'm going to use tracing paper. Okay, and I am going to feel where that's at right now. I normally put a little piece of tape down so that I can check it, okay? So, we are going to trace our pumpkin on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use modeling paste to sculpt this pumpkin onto our little canvas. Okay, so I'm going to pick that up and I can barely, barely see that. Okay, but I don't know if you guys can see that. You might not be able to see it very good, but it's there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my modeling paste and I am going to take one of my little um, palette brushes, okay, or palette knives I should say, and we are going to add that pumpkin in, okay? So I'm just going to go around. So I'm putting this on top of the green, you guys. And I did that green underneath just to protect um, in case we had any little flaws. Okay, so I'm just going to put that around. It's kind of hard to see the pumpkin, but it is really there. <laughs> okay. So what I like to do is I like to do one side and I like to keep my pumpkin really close by, okay? Because once I cover that, it's kind of hard to see. And then what I'm going to do is I just take a little bit more on my knife and I'm just trying to push it in. So see how I can get those lines? So 
you can see that. Kind of see that, how I'm doing that, okay? So I'm going to do the other side. Okay, I'm just going to put some more on there. You can just barely see where I've got my lines at. Okay, I'm going to push it out because I want that ridge on the outside too. And this sometimes, you guys, just takes a little bit of practice. Okay. Let's see, I'm just going to push it out. Push it out. See how I just got that pushed out like that. Then I'm just going to take a little bit more, and I want to get that second line in there. Okay. And sometimes it gets a little messy. Okay. And actually, what I think I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm going to grab one of my small, smaller palette brushes. Okay. So I can get in there a little bit better. And I'm just putting a little bit on there, okay? So I've got that line. I've got that line. Okay, got a little bit much there, Lisa. And then we've got that middle. And you know what, you guys? This is what you can do, okay? Let's just start all over, okay? I'm going to push it out to the side, and sometimes this is what's the easiest to do, is just get it all on there. Okay, so we got it all nice and covered. Okay. And then what I can do is take my knife, and I'll just come through, and see how I'm just pushing that out? And then I just have that one little line right there. Okay. And then I've got one more to do. Okay. So it looks a little messy right now, but once we get this little guy painted all up, he is really going to look like a pumpkin. Okay. I'm just going to do a little bit on that stem. Okay. And bring him up. Okay. So that is it. So we just need to let this dry now. And sometimes Lisa just likes to keep playing with it. But I got quite a bit of cl uh, paste on here. So it is going to take a little bit longer to dry. Okay. So there we have it. Kind of messy, but in a um, little bit of time this will dry. And then we're going to add a coat of paint on it. And it's really going to start to look like a pumpkin. Okay. So I'll join you back as soon as this one's dry. Okay, so our pumpkin is all dry, and what we're going to do now is we are going to mix a little bit of paint. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit of pumpkin and khaki, and I just like what this looks like. I might have a little bit too much khaki there, Lisa, but we'll see. Yeah, that was way too much khaki, I think. Oh, we might be okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to paint our pumpkin. And just take your time. You're going to go in all of the little crevices. Okay. And when we add the slow dry medium, it is so cool what it does with the shading for you. And then when I go around here, I just go really slow. Okay, and if I don't, I try to stay away from the green. Okay, and if I get a little bit, leave a little bit of the white, it's okay. Because when we add in our um, other, in our next mixture, you're going to see how it'll take care of all of those little edges. Okay, so I'm just doing really slow, going around my edges, and I'm finishing my little pumpkin off. And you guys could definitely do a little bit of shading here if you want, which we might just grab 
some white out to add a little bit. Okay, see how cute that's coming? And see as I'm going along here, I'm just taking my time. And I'm okay if I leave a little bit, you guys. And you'll see why after this dries when we add that next coat. Okay. Try to get in just a little bit closer there. I'm just taking my brush and just laying it really close. Okay, I'm not going to worry about those little edges that I've got right there showing. Okay, I am going to go ahead though and grab some burnt umber to do my little stem though. I forgot to bring any out for the stem. Okay, get my paintbrush rinsed off a little bit. I don't mind if I add, a, keep a little bit of that orange in. That brown just takes over. Okay, and then I'm just going to add that in for my little stem. See how easy that is, you guys? Okay, we're going to let this little cute little pumpkin dry and then I'll show you the next fun thing we get to do. Okay, so there we are with our cute little pumpkin. Okay, a little bit of white in there. We're fine with that. We're going to get that all cleaned up with our next step. So, okay, so we're getting there. I'll join you back in a few minutes. Okay, so our pumpkin is all dry. Okay, and you can see that I've got that three-dimensional look to it, okay? So now comes the fun part to add a little bit of um, shading to it. And this is just a really cool um, trick to do. So this is Liquitex um, Acrylic Medium, and it's a slow dry, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit on my plate, okay? And then I am using raw umber. And I'm just putting a little bit of raw umber in there, okay? And we're just gonna mix it up. And then what we're gonna do is, it was always scary the first time I used this product, is we are gonna paint this all over, and then I've got a cloth ready to go that we're gonna wipe it all off, okay? So I'm just going to put it all over my pumpkin. And like I tell you, this part is always a little scary, you guys because it looks like we're losing all that beautiful color of the pumpkin, but just wait till you see what it comes out like, okay? So I'm, since this is such a little piece, I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. There are times that I would do a section at a time, but again, this piece is just really small, so, I'm going to get it all nice and covered, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our cloth, okay? And I like to fold my cloth, you guys, so I just have enough like it's on my finger, right? In fact, I'm going to bring my finger inside there, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just wiping, okay? I'm wiping off the excess. Okay, see how by just wiping and working your way around that excess, look at how our pumpkin has picked up all that dimension. And you can even take some and wipe down your sides just so you clean up your sides really well. Okay. And the more you wipe off, see how that is? It just turns out so cool. So then what we do is we'll let this piece dry, okay? And 
we'll let this piece dry and then what we're going to do you guys is we'll let that dry and I'll just show you what I've got planned for the next step. The next step is I've got some orange glass okay and I actually um, had some clear glass that I had bought at Michael's and I spray painted it orange so I could have some orange color and then I actually broke a beer bottle up okay and so I've got some brown glass and we're just going to add a few flecks of glass we're not going to overdo it with glass we're going to add a few flecks of glass here and then of course we're going to add some to that cute little stem okay then what we're going to do is we're going to be ready to add some epoxy so while i'm waiting for that to dry um, if i can carefully do this one step you always want to do when you're getting ready to lay epoxy is you always um well, I, I shouldn't say always. If you're really good at laying epoxy and you don't have any drips, you don't need to do this step. Um, Lisa hasn't mastered it that well yet, so I like to tape off my edges of my um, pieces, okay? And that way it just protects the bottom so that when I am getting ready to do the epoxy, if I have any drips, um, it'll drip on the tape, right? And then the tape um, is peeled off when we're all done with our epoxy. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and go like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim off the edges. Okay, because I don't want those edges. And we definitely want our acrylic medium to be that to be totally dry, okay, the slow dry, um, before we add the epoxy, okay. Um, really important that we've got it nice and dry, okay. So, now I'll give you guys a little view of one that I made earlier. It's actually a sunflower, and this has already got the epoxy on it, but you can see there that I used the medium on my sunflower. And in this case, this is where I put the glass, okay? So it's kind of really close to the same effect, okay? This one just being a sunflower. And then of course, I do have a large sunflower on my wall and I will make sure I give you guys a close up view of that. So we're just gonna let this one dry, okay? And as soon as it is dry, I just love how it's turning out. As soon as it is dry, you guys, we will add some glass and put some epoxy on. Can't wait to share that next step with you. Okay, crafters, we are ready for the resin stage and the glass stage. So you can see our pumpkin is all nice and dry and you can definitely see the definition from using that um, slow, dry, slow dry medium on it, okay? So now what we wanna do is we wanna add some glass. So as I had said before, I had some brown glass that I actually took and broke up um, an old beer bottle. And I had one small piece that reminded me of a stem. So I'm actually gonna add that on top of the stem there, okay? And before I get going too far, when we get to the resin stage, I always like to have my pieces elevated. So I always just use Jenga blocks. So I'm just gonna elevate that, okay? And then, I had some clear um, glass and I just took some spray paint to it and I colored it, okay? And I'm only gonna add just a little bit of orange in here. I don't wanna overdo it with the orange, but I thought it would be fun just to add a couple pieces of glass, just to add a little bit to my pumpkin. Like I say, you can sometimes you can overdo it with glass and I just thought just a little bit of extra glitter might be really, really pretty on this pumpkin. And then what's gonna happen, you guys, is we are gonna mix up our resin, and then we're gonna pour resin on it, and we're gonna have our cute little pumpkin all done. So let's just, I just wanna, some of the glass didn't get painted on both sides, so I'm literally just trying to piece some glasses in there, some glass pieces in there. Okay, 
and then we'll start pouring our resin and we're going to be using um, art resin which is the resin that I just have really um, fell in love with it works really nice it clears dry it's also good if you've got a food surface which is nice if you're doing like a cutting board or something um, so it's a good resin for that okay I think that's as much glass as I want to put on just just a little bit just to give my pumpkin a little bit of pizzazz I guess I would say okay so whenever we're working with resin I always use little mini measuring cups okay and I always put gloves on you guys um, you do not want to get resin on your hands. Now, I will say that some people also use um, uh, a mass. This resin does not bother me at all, and so um, I don't feel a need to use a mask. This is the art resin we're going to be using. It's um, hardener and resin, so it is a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? And I am, this is such a little, little um, design that I am going to use probably just about 10 cc's or 10 milliliters. So I'm going to do five, and you can see it on my, if you can see my medicine cup, I'm going to do five cc's or five milliliters um, of each. So whenever I'm pouring my resin, you guys, I always use three cups, um, and I always... Um, make sure that it's exactly the same. There's no, um, no's not the right word. Um, there, you want to make sure it's precise, okay? I always put the lid on it as soon as I'm done with it, so I don't take the chance of pouring the other one um, twice, okay? So you want to make sure that you've got both of them, and they've got to be the exact same amount um, for your resin to cure, Okay, so I don't have a lot of resin here. I'm just going to eyeball these, you guys. Um, I don't have a lot of resin there, but I don't need it for this project. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my parts and I'm going to put them into a third cup. Now, some people feel very confident in um, measuring into the same cup, and um, I haven't got it perfected to that point yet. So I always use a third cup. I pick up my cups at Amazon. And so I'm just going to do this now. The next trick, you guys, is, is to mix your resin very slow, okay? Um, the resin will get bubbly, and so you want to mix it slow. We are going to add a little bit of heat to it when we're all done, okay? but I want to mix it slow. Now it does start to get a little cloudy, okay, um, when you're first starting to mix it. No matter the size that you make, you want to mix it for three minutes. And you want to make sure you're doing your edges, you're um, really giving it a good mixture, okay? And there are going to be bubbles. You're not going to get away with not having bubbles. But if you do it too fast, you'll have a lot of bubbles, okay? So I'm actually gonna watch my clock and I am gonna do this for three minutes. I'm gonna fast forward through it for you guys so you don't have to sit and watch me stir this for three minutes. Um, but as soon as it is done mixed up, we will apply it to our canvas. And we're just about done with this project. Okay, so I am all done stirring, and the very first thing I do with my resin is I'm going to go around my glass, okay? Now, you also want to make sure you're on a level surface, okay? And I know my countertop is totally level, okay? Resin will self-level, and so you just want to make sure that you are getting some on your glass, okay? And then once we have it done on our glass, what we're gonna do is we are going to put the rest of our resin all the way around, okay? And then I can either use, I've got a little applicator that I can use to spread my resin around, or sometimes, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I just like using 
my hands because I can feel the resin. Okay, so I get everything out of my cup. Okay, and I'll show you the little applicator that you can use. It's a little makeup applicator, okay? And this is kind of a small project um, to be doing with the makeup applicator, but it does work good around all my edges here, okay? And then what I'll do is I'm going to use my fingers to make sure that all my sides are done, okay? So I'm just going to, and I'm going to kind of just spread it around. Got one little piece of glass that's kind of escaping, okay? So that all looks good, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring some around my edges. And then what I'll use is I'll use my fingers to spread it evenly. And remember we put that tape down on the bottom to protect us from any drips. Okay, so got lots of extra resin in there. Just gonna get some spread out so I can make sure I get all my sides nice. Okay, now some people choose not to put resin down the sides. I just think it really adds to it. Now one thing I didn't do, you guys, and I've been trying to do is sign my pieces, and I normally do that on the sides. And I think I got too excited showing you guys this project that I forgot to, to sign it, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I'm all around all my edges. I'm just feeling it with my fingers, okay? I've got those blocks underneath, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gloves off, and I'm going to grab my heat gun. Now you can use a heat gun, you can use a torch. I'm actually going to be using my embossing gun. My embossing heat gun is what I'm going to be using, okay? And I'm just going to go really quickly over it. And all I'm trying to do here is pop bubbles, okay? So if there's any bubbles, I'm not trying to move my resin. I'm just trying to pop bubbles. And that's it, you guys. We will come back tomorrow and we will see our finished product. I will tell you, I'll probably come back in about 10 minutes and just double check my sides. As everything is starting to self-level, I don't want to get, um, you know, big drips down the side. So I will double check that. So, okay. But let me just see if I can carefully lift that up so you guys can see how beautiful our little pumpkin's going to be. So I'll show you the finished product tomorrow. Thanks for joining okay, me. Okay, our pumpkin is all done and how cute did that turn out? So the last thing we need to do is to remove um, the tape and this is the reason why we wanted to put that tape there because it's on the tape and not on the canvas. So it cleans up our canvas really nice. And we are all ready to put that cute little pumpkin on display. So I'll give you a close-up view of it, and I will actually give you another close-up view of the sunflower one I did too. And then I did mention I've got a large one up on the wall, and I'll make sure to show you that too. So thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. And here's a close-up view of our cute pumpkin with the resin all applied along with the sunflower. I also just love this large sunflower that I did. I hope you enjoyed this Inspiration Friday project. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for other DIY type projects, make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com.